This is a brand new recent test. Today I'm testing the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX more than one year after its initial release. So you're getting a pretty up-to-date insight into what this GPU is capable and incapable of at the end of the day. A lot of time and hard work went into this. As is well known, there were a few issues plaguing these graphics cards when they first got released and even long afterwards. It wasn't long ago that the last issue was supposedly fixed via driver updates. To be exact, I bought this GPU for my test system. This way I can provide you with more accurate test results, especially when it comes to CPUs. This is the ASUS RX 7900 XTX Tough Gaming OC. Not only will I be testing the performance in games with and without upscaling and or ray tracing, but also the power consumption and temperatures. How well does this GPU really perform and how does it compare to my RTX 3090 that I had in my test system for the last few years? Price. In March 2024, the version by ASUS can be had for about 1030 to 1100 US dollars. Whereas random AIB models by other board partners go for somewhere in the range of 910 to 1150 dollars. The graphics card is definitely being presented very nicely by ASUS. They've done a great job. The scope of delivery includes everything, although the most useful of the bunch would most certainly be the small screwdriver slash GPU holder or support. Anyway, we are dealing with anything else but a small graphics card. The Tough Gaming OC version of the RX 7900 XTX comes in at dimensions of 353 by 158 by 73 millimeters. Therefore, before buying, you should definitely make sure such a chunky beast of a GPU actually fits properly into your PC case. The build quality of this ASUS model seems to be great. The card features both, for the most part, a metal shroud and a robust metal backplate. Despite the high weight due to the massive aluminum heatsinks, the card is fairly rigid. ASUS themselves speak of a 3.63 slot design. All in all, this ensures quite a cool operation, but it sure does take up a lot of space in the system, perhaps even covering up one or two extra PCIe slots of your motherboard you may or may not need. On default, the cooling is configured semi-passively, so the fans only kick in when active cooling is necessary. Aesthetically, this tough gaming design definitely leaves a good impression on me. There's also some ARGB lighting on board, which can be controlled via Aura Sync or the ASUS Armory Crate software, for instance. Unlike with current NVIDIA high-end cards, there's no infamous 12 volt high power connector on here, but instead a total of three traditional PCIe 8-pin power connectors. Part of ASUS's design also is a BIOS switch, allowing you to switch to either performance or quiet mode. When it comes to video outputs, AMD is currently a little more generous than NVIDIA, bringing three of the new DisplayPort 2.1 ports along with an HDMI 2.1A port to the table. We should not be lacking video memory in the near future, because with 24GB of GDDR6, this GPU is looking real good in terms of memory, although its counterpart RTX 4080 Super comes with less, but in turn, theoretically faster VRAM. Test setup. As far as the CPU goes, I use the Intel Core i9-13900K at a fixed 253 watt power limit. As for the motherboard, my trusty ASRock Z790 Tai Chi, and as for the RAM, the Kingston Fury Beast RGB, DDR5 6000 MHz, CL36, and 32GB of it. Clock speeds. Not that it plays a big role, since GPUs generally clock very differently from architecture to architecture, but we still see a significant increase in clock speeds on the current RX 7900 XTX, both in terms of GPU and memory. But I'll no longer delay the benchmarks, let the testing begin. Performance, gaming. Assassin's Creed Mirage. The main focus here being on the 4K UHD resolution, as a 7900 XTX would basically be a bit excessive for 1440p gaming only. Unfortunately, I currently do not have the financial means to include an RTX 4080 or 4080 Super or even a 4090 in the test. Thank you for understanding. Anyway, here the 7900 XTX offers 42% more performance at 4K UHD than my old RTX 3090. 
and an impressive 73% more than the predecessor RX 6900 XT. At 1440p, this translates to an increase of even 56% compared to the 3090 and 70% compared to the 6900 XT. Borderlands 3, the more recent Radiant card, isn't showing off a huge lead here, but still being around 20% ahead at 4K UHD over the 3090, at WQHD then only by 14%. Compared to the predecessor, however, we are talking about 39 or 25% respectively. Cyberpunk 2077, at 4K max graphics settings, even such high-end GPUs seem to struggle. The 7900 XTX delivers a 29% higher frame rate than the RTX 3090 and impressive 52% more than the 6900 XT. Reducing the resolution down to WQHD, this translates to roughly 39 and 47 percent respectively. Far Cry 6. The 7900 XTX performs 48 percent better than its predecessor and 51 percent better than the 3090. At 1440p, we report a performance uplift of 22 and 30 percent respectively. Forza Horizon 5. Here the new Radeon GPU is almost 38% ahead of the 6900 XT and a respectable 53% ahead of the RTX 3090. In the WQHD test, we see a gap of 29 and 46% respectively. Horizon Zero Dawn. Here the 7900 XTX positions itself around 30% ahead of the RTX 3090 and a remarkable 53% ahead of its predecessor. In the 1440p run, this mounts to an increase of 22 and 23% respectively. Metro Exodus. Now the 3090 and 7900 XTX are 42% apart from each other, 6900 XT and 7900 XTX separating themselves by 59%. At WQHD, that's 42% and 54%. Red Dead Redemption 2. A huge performance uplift can be measured here. At 4K alone, the 7900 XTX is 64% faster than the 3090 and 75% faster than its Radeon predecessor. At 1440p, we are then talking about 49 and 43% respectively. Finally, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Despite the game's age, 33% can be measured at 4K between the 3090 and 7900 XTX and at least 39% compared to the 6900 XT. By slightly reducing the resolution, we get 37 and 36% respectively. Gaming average FPS. On average, based on the 9 games tested, the RX 7900 XTX in the 4K UHD test is ahead by 51% over its predecessor 6900 XT and even an impressive 42% ahead of the RTX 3090. At 1440p, this corresponds to our familiar 37 and 36% respectively. Gaming with the respective upscaling technologies. Assassin's Creed Mirage. Here the current 7900 XTX overtakes the older RTX 3090 by almost 51% in the 4K test. We are talking about 69% when the 6900 XT enters the picture. At WQHD, that would be 56 and 64% respectively. Cyberpunk 2077. Using FSR, the new Radeon GPU achieves 46% higher FPS over the 3090 and even a 72% higher frame rate over its Radeon predecessor. At 1440p, we are reporting a 49 and 55% increase in performance, respectively. Far Cry 6. The 6900 XT performs surprisingly well here when having FSR enabled. The 7900 XTX is still 28% ahead, though 33% ahead of the NVIDIA X flagship. At 1440p, there's not exactly happening much. Horizon Zero Dawn. Here the 7900 XTX picks up speed, to be exact, 33% compared to its predecessor card and 47% as opposed to the 3090. Now in the WQHD run, this translates to a measly 7 and 12% respectively. Red Dead Redemption 2. Here the current Radeon flagship achieves a remarkable leap in performance. We are talking of a 71% higher frame rate at 4K compared to a 6900 XT or a 3090. Lowering things down to 1440p leads to gains of 30 and 37% respectively. Gaming with ray tracing. 
Cyberpunk 2077, this is where a major weakness of these Radiant cards is revealed. While the 7900 XTX, as seen in those previous tests, packs quite a punch when it comes to raw performance, the current Radiant flagship and the X flagship by Nvidia go neck and neck once ray tracing is enabled. At 1440p, even the RTX 3090 is 4 to 5% ahead of the AMD card. At least AMD did manage a 69% performance uplift with ray tracing compared to their 6900 XT. To be fair though, it must be said that every newer graphics card is overwhelmed with ray tracing enabled, depending on the game title, unless some sort of upscaling is enabled to aid with the frame rate. Forza Horizon 5. Obviously, this heavily depends on the game title and its implementation of ray tracing, because here we report a performance increase of 49% over the 6900 XT and 3090. In the WQHD test run, that would be 33 and 44% more performance respectively. Productivity. Thanks to the widespread support of CUDA, NVIDIA GPUs have a clear advantage here, although there are now also seem to be open source workarounds for AMD GPUs to run CUDA apps. Nonetheless, I decided to stick to the officially supported test run with Blender open data for now without any workarounds. For such a rendering task, even the older RTX 3090 achieves around 64% higher results over the 7900 XTX. At least AMD manages to achieve a performance gain of a respectable 50% over its predecessor. Power consumption and temperatures. And here I was positively surprised. As is well known, many users report of excessively high power consumption when handling the 7900 XTX. With the latest graphics drivers, I managed to read out just under a 3% higher power draw compared to the RTX 3090 measured with the entire tool system directly from the wall. In contrast to the 6900 XT, however, the successor consumes 18% more power. Of course, this is to be considered high power draw generally speaking, but that doesn't only apply to the 7900 XTX. The idle power draw with my configuration at least is comparable to that of a 3090. During gaming, the 7900 XTX with the entire remaining system pulls almost 6% more from the wall than an RTX 3090 and 14% more than a 6900 XT. So no question, I would certainly like seeing lower power consumption, but compared to the performance offered, I wouldn't speak of bad values here. Thanks to the massive tough gaming cooler by Asus, the card stays very cool even under full load, the fans only spinning up at low fan speeds, meaning they're practically inaudible, although there was clear coil whining going on with my specific model. Conclusion. As far as I am concerned, the RX 7900 XTX, the tough gaming OC version of it by Asus, fully convinced me. Even though I can't currently make direct comparisons with competing NVIDIA models such as an RTX 4080 or 4080 Super, the Radeon 7900 XTX, for my purposes and needs, in the test system fulfills its purposes and quite well at that. I also can't report of any driver-related issues or any crashes within Windows or in games, even though I often hear and read about bad experiences in that regard from buyers of Radeon cards. I think it's important that you carefully uninstall old drivers so that there are no leftover files. Of course, neither an RX 6900 XT nor an RTX 3090 represent serious competition for this more recent 7900 XTX. I certainly would have liked to include fitting comparable Nvidia GPUs in a chart, but my current financial resources do not allow for it at the moment. As I see it, the strengths of the 7900 XTX lie primarily in its raw performance and its good price performance ratio. Neither power consumption, temperatures, nor drivers have currently caused me any problems so far. However, AMD is visibly struggling a lot when it comes to ray tracing. There are positive exceptions, depending on the game title, but in general it can be said that these Radeon GPUs are somewhat lackluster in terms of their ray tracing capabilities. Fortunately, the frame rate can somewhat be smoothed out by using FSR upscaling. So if you want high-end performance at a lower price and can largely go without ray tracing and don't really use the graphics card productively on a large scale where CUDA support often matters, 
In my humble opinion, you can buy the RX 7900 XTX without any hesitation. However, based on the comments on my last video regarding the 7900 XTX topic, I couldn't help but notice that the opinions within the community differ greatly. Nonetheless, I would once again love to see a civilized exchange of opinions between us hardware enthusiasts. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, and if you didn't, go ahead and make use of that dislike button. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and until the next one.